So what's going on guys? This is Jim Go Go Five um, on another tutorial on how to make a platformer, a simple platformer in Flash. Um, I believe this works for uh, every, almost every version of Flash. Uh, but uh, if I were you, I'd use uh, Flash CS3, CS4, CS5, and so on. Um, because uh, the older versions, I don't think that they have all uh, the stuff you need to make this game. So, uh, basically, before I start, um, a lot of you guys have been uh, uh, telling me, you know, you have been uh, writing comments and sending me private messages on YouTube. Um, because I I promised to make some um, more in-depth tutorials on escape games uh, based on the ones I I have already uploaded, but I uh, I didn't have any time at all. Uh, <laughs> I know I know it's ridiculous, but I I almost couldn't open my computer to play a game for ten minutes. You know, uh, not much time. So. Uh, I hope now that I have more time, I'd be able to make some new tutorials for you guys to watch. So, let's get started. Um, here in our scene, we have uh, a player movie clip, which is just uh, a normal movie clip with uh, three frames. That is because um, that is because of our, of our code, because um, our code... Uh, it's basically uh, almost the whole code is on the player, and um, you know that's because it checks for everything. Um, it checks if the player is touching the ground, if you're pressing some key, um, and so on and so on. So um, basically, what it does is uh, when you're pressing the D key, uh, that means when you want your player to go to the right, um, the player movie clip will stop at the first frame and uh, go to the right. And the f uh, let me explain what these frames are. Um, on the first frame, we have um, a, a character movie clip, a movie clip of our character, uh, with a simple animation of him uh, walking. Now, I know this is very crowded, but <laughs> I'm not a great animator, so... Um, on the second frame, we have uh, our character while jumping, while in midair, and uh, on the third frame, we have our character standing. So, that's the three frames. It's very important to keep them in that kind of order. Uh, you know, first frame walking, second jumping, and third standing. It's also very important to keep the registration point at the at the bottom of your character because uh, that's where uh, he's gonna touch the ground. If it's you know if it's uh, somewhere around here, um, your p player will fall uh, halfway through the ground and then he will stand on his uh, back. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. So. Uh, yeah, keep in mind the registration point must be on the down uh, side of your character. So, uh, one last thing, you give him uh, an instant name of player, but uh, that again is uh, is what the code is for. So, if, if you know how to change it in, in here, you can... Um, you know, you can name it uh, anything you want, but with this specific code, you cannot. If you change the instance name, you your uh, game uh, cannot work. So uh, the next thing we have here is uh, our ground, which is just the movie clip of the ground. Um, you know, just this uh, with an instance name of ground. Now, you should pay attention. Uh, to this, you you do not want your ground to be too thin. You know, you c you you say you know, I can draw a line, and uh, 
convert it to a movie clip and uh, give it the in instance name of uh, ground, and it should work. But no, it, it wouldn't work because uh, the ground needs to be uh, somewhat thick for the player to stand on it. Uh, I think you'd be safe uh, in around uh, 40, 50 pixels, somewhat like that. Well, this is much bigger, so yeah, he doesn't fall through it. Um, yeah, uh, one, last th one last thing with uh, the ground, it, it uh, shouldn't be completely straight or built, uh, you know, like this. So you could uh, just uh, you could have uh, surfaces like this or this, and your character would uh, would have no problem walking on them. Yeah, you you shouldn't go too far though, <laughs> you know, uh, with the lags and stuff. Okay, that's with the ground. Uh, now uh, with the score meter, that's uh, just a plus, you know. You could, you sh you you're not uh, obligated to have this in your game, but you know it's always nice to have a score or a life count, something like this. So all you need is a is a normal text box of static text. Um, you know, just to let the player know that uh, this is the score count, and then you need uh, a dynamic box. Um, with the variable score, so uh, that that will be the actual uh, counter. So um, now you want to 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 go on the first frame. Basically, you want to have the score on a different layer, and you want to have it on the top of the other layers. You know, so your character can get. Uh, behind it but not above it and hide it you know when uh, if you're having a, a building here or a bigger character and something like that you don't want to get on top of the score because it, it will hide it and you want to go on the first frame of the score and uh, type this uh, remember all of the codes will be on my website flashframe.com .webs.com um, it will be on the description if you guys want to check out the code and copy and paste it in your own games um, another thing which I forgot to mention earlier is um, the the next level thingy here which is basically it's a uh, 50 pixel wide and uh, you must make it as tall as your stages to be safe and it's uh, basically just a rectangle just a normal rectangle which I have uh, uh, which is which uh, has alpha 0% to make it invisible and you don't want that to be visible you just want it to be there so when the player runs through it, uh, you will go to the next frame. Uh, you know, just because uh, a platformer will be boring if it just had one level and you can walk around and stuff. You need to to have the possibility of going to the next level. So you hit that, and then your character, your frame changes, and so does your level. So, all you need is uh, to have this code on say this. Uh, for the programmers, it's a simple hit test code. Uh, very simple, you know, just uh, checking if your uh, player hits this. And um, it will go to the next frame. Uh, one more thing, uh, you need to add stop this in all of your frames. Uh, because uh, if you don't, uh, it will play like a normal animation and it will never stop in one frame. It'll do something like this and you, you're you not going to be able to play. And so, what, w what we have here is um, 
is a reset uh, for our player because um, w if you leave it like this without uh, this little bit of code here, uh, when you hit the um, level changer, let's name it something like this. Yeah, when you hit this, you'll uh, spawn on the next level, but uh, you'll spawn exactly where you hit it. You'll spawn som somewhere around here. And uh, because we want this to be realistic, um, we set the player to spawn over th over here. Because, uh, you know, when you enter a door, you and you, when you open the door and enter the other room, you you can't go immediately to the other side of the room. You need to pass the door first and cross the whole room and then go to the other side. Yeah, you'll see when we test it. So, um, you can also have um, this thing for uh, going backwards, but I wouldn't recommend it because um, it needs a lot of coding and it's really confusing to uh, add a reset on the beginning because um, you will always start here, which uh, we didn't want. You know, you don't want your game to start at the right side of the level instead of the left side because or the middle or wherever you go. But if uh, it suits you or if you know how to correct this, how to fix this, uh, Go ahead and do it, but I wouldn't do it. It's, <laughs> you know, it messes up my game. So, um, and now for the coins. The coins are just movie clips with a drawing. You you can even add an animation if you want, you know. It, you can make it sparkle or something like that. And um, it has a little bit of code, uh, which is basically saying that um, when uh, our player hits it, uh, he uh, our score um, is uh, getting bigger by one. So um, when uh, uh, each time you pick up a coin, your score uh, gets bigger by one. And you can change this. You can make different types of coins or wherever you want your score to be and uh, you can make them add even more score for example you know uh, you can make them add 5 or or 10 or whatever you can even make them be uh, penalty scores and subtract 4 for example but I'll just leave it for the moment being and one last thing you need to to pay attention to is uh, you need to organize your layers because you're gonna have uh, many objects, especially if you, I mean, come on, you're not gonna be making such a simple platformer. You're gonna make it more complicated, and that means you'll have more objects and need to organize them more carefully so you don't get confused. Uh, where its thing is. Now, this is very small, so I just made three layers. I think it's better to have everything in a separate layer. I mean, the ground on a separate layer, the um, level changer on a separate layer, the score, of course, on the top layer, and so on and so on, the coins on a different layer. But uh, yeah, this is pretty small, so I figured I'd just put them all in one layer. Um, so it uh, let's test it, see how it goes. You know, we begin uh, here. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Um, if you're using um, CS5, CS5.5, or CS6, as I'm using right now, uh, you definitely want to embed the the font you're using. I mean, um, I'm currently using Georgia this example and you definitely want to hit embed select all and hit ok and this will add a font to your library uh, what this does is that um, it allows the 
it allows Flash to um, uh, to work uh, with variables using this font. Without it, you wouldn't be able to um, to write anything on here, except if you except if you write it uh, yourself as a developer. But th the system wouldn't be able. So uh, you definitely want to do this. I think uh, that you don't need to do this in Flash, CS4, or CS3, but um, on CS5 or greater, you definitely want to do this. Otherwise, it won't work. So let's see it. Um, yeah, we have here our player. <laughs> I know it looks very grubby. It's like he dances uh, some retarded way or something. Yeah, you can d jump. Um, uh, at this time, I haven't added anything here, so you can fall from the side. That's very bad. Uh, you should add uh, another um, rectangle here, just like the lever changer, but uh, give it the instance name of ground. So when the player hits it, it won't let him uh, get any further than that. So he won't be able to fall off the level. Oh, you could add, you could simply uh, add a wall here or something. So my score's at zero. I haven't picked anything up yet, and I'm hitting the level changer. I'm going to the other level. The the resetter is um, kicking me back here because otherwise I would uh, spawn some somewhere around here. And I pick up the coin. It disappears, and my score goes plus one. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. Um, please, please like and subscribe if you like the video. Uh, subscribe if you wanna um, see more videos from me on the future. And uh, oh, don't forget, all of the codes are on my website. Um, until next time, have a great time, dudes.